Well, we have a dopey. And you can see actually the mud on his horns that he's buried into the sand uh, to try and make himself look that little more scary to the, more, the boys and that little more appealing to the girls. Hey, Topey Top. But Topies are not the only animals we've got here uh, in this uh, very spot. We have got a very disgruntled looking gentleman. Here we go, a lovely East African buffalo bull. Now I really feel sorry for these guys out here because the amount of flies they have to deal with is insane. It looks like his horns are actually alive and you can just see those flies moving all over them. And they are just absolutely littered in biting flies. So I think they might be slightly more grumpier than the ones at Juma. Well, they certainly look at you like they are. And then I'm just going to move the vehicle forward a little bit. And it is, I think, definitely becoming one of my most favorite creatures in the whole world. And they just have the, such strange looks on their faces. And it is the Thompson's Gazelle. Hello, Tom Toms. And uh, I didn't actually notice it properly until Jamie pointed it out to me. She says, out of all the antelopes she's ever seen, Thompson's gazelles have the most deformed or oddly shaped horns than, ooh, that's quite sticky there, I'm not going to go all the way down, uh, than, than other antelope. So there they are. Oh, tired Tommy. And she doesn't even have horns, it must have fallen off. So the females normally have horns. So Rupert was saying, do all antelope species have the hump on their back? Well, if you have a look at these tommies, you, you see there's very much not a hump. Topi is an oddly shaped species. It's not actually a hump. It's the high shoulder that you're seeing there. But um, when you see a hump on an antelope, it is normally its shoulder. That's a little boy to the right. And you can just see by the thickness of the base of the horns. But if we go across to the ones to the left slightly, Jandre, you can see those 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 funny horn shapes. There, well, she's got one there as well. Those funny horn shapes that the, the female Tommies have to uh, seem to have. They always skew or squiff or one horned or something. Well, she's giving herself a good preen. I just love their noses. I don't know why their, their noses are just too funny for me. And you can see she's heavily pregnant at the moment. And I was across the other side of the river uh, day before yesterday, and we, we did see some baby Tommies. So uh, most of the, the female Thompsons are pregnant at the moment, and, and we should be seeing quite a few babies in the next little while. And if we keep going, to the, there's one with very squiff horns a little bit further to the left. A little bit more. There we go. And the one at the back, you can see there's almost a... Well, actually, the one in the front as well. Uh, one, her, her horns are going in, and the one on the left's horns are going out. Yes, I'm talking about you. Look how funny your horns are. Look how squonk they are. Now, it's, I think it's quite interesting, because we, we're pretty much looking at evolution in, in play at the moment. So you'll know, like impala females, for example, don't have horns, um, and they've evolved that way. And I think Thompson's gazelle females are going the same way. That those horns are actually redundant; they they, they can't use them for uh, for defence, and uh, that's why they're so skinny and sort of useless, really. Well, I think they're wonderful because they're always such different and interesting shapes. But uh, I think eventually that female Thompson's gazelles um, will evolve to not have horns. My goodness, that frog sounded like a wildebeest. One frog went, meh. And I was like, oh, the wild migration here already. That's fast, but no, not quite. Migration is still on the other side of the river. Um, and it's still around the Sand River, and uh, it's not the full migration. It's only probably about 100 to 150,000 animals, mostly zebra, and they have got a sea of grass to go through before they start heading north and, and west towards the river. But you never know what's going to happen. So they're already a month earlier than they normally are, and uh, we're going to hopefully have them uh, 
close to camp quite soon. David says they look like little oryx. Well, I never thought of it that, but I suppose the color scheme's a little bit similar. Um, oh, she's tired. Tired of having horns. Come on, Evolution, hurry up. I just, I love the stripes on their face and that, that sort of nose, that sort of, um, that, sort of that little bump on it. And you can see they, like the buffalo, are constantly plagued by the biting flies. And now, if you look carefully, thanks, Chandra, you can actually just see those flies buzzing around. But I love that little bump on the nose. They're just so funny looking. Now, I know a lot of you will, will have heard me say this before, but I just think it's such an incredible quote. And uh, it is a quote from the man that the Thompson's gazelles are named after, who was an explorer in Africa. And he was most famous for being able to sort of tread lightly and go places where other people couldn't go without having all his porters resign or try and murder him or the local people he moved past. And um, he said, those who travel quietly... Wait, let me remember the quote now, sorry. Those who travel quietly travel safely. Those who travel safely travel far. Yes, Mr. Thompson was a wise, wise man before his years. Mm. Oh, we have some impala off to the right that are having a bit of a tussle. Uh, youngish boys. And uh, here we go. Hi, right, boys. Uh, see, now those would be considered massive horns on a southern South African impala, but they're, they're quite small on the East African scale. Now, the reason the East African impala's horns get so much bigger than the Southern African impala's horns is that they're basically like gym bunnies on steroids. Now, the reason for that is that there's no set mating season, so the rut is continuous throughout the the year. So to keep up that level of stamina and competition for the females, they, they literally have testosterone pouring out of every pore, which causes them to have quite a bit, much bigger body size, and in particular a much bigger horn size since it's used uh, so often, often. Now, in this case, this is not a very serious fight. This is just a little bit of light-hearted sparring. Oof, that was a bit more serious. But the reason I say it's not so serious is because there's not a woman in sight. Uh, it's all about showing off at the moment and practicing for the big show. So this is, they're all part of a bachelor herd. I can't actually see the the herd of females yet. So this is all practice when they've got to take on one of those East African beasts who controls the, the harem of females. Quickly, get him while he's not looking. <laughs> I saw it coming. I just saw that glint in that Impala's eye, trying to take advantage of his, his, his competitor not keeping an eye on him. Nico is wondering, are the Impala as common here as they are in the Kruger? Um, not as common, but they are still very common. I'd say they're the second most numerous antelope after after Tommy's. But they are quite common, but in, sometimes in the, in the really big seas of grass, you don't see them too much. They, they do like to have a little bit of bush cover around um, as well. So along the river, very common. Probably actually more common than... Then the Tommies around the rivers. Oh, he's had enough now. Oh, or has he? No, he's coming back. No, he's. Oh, what's he up to? 
showing how fleet of foot he is. Um, dance, what's it? Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Just make sure no lion or cheetah is watching you because otherwise you'll be dinner. Now, predators will often take advantage of, of male antelopes sparring or fighting because they're often quite so focused on, on, on fighting each other that they don't notice uh, a 400 pound lion sneaking up on them. Speaking of sneaking, I think we're going to sneak further along, uh, see what other wonders the Mara has to offer us, and uh, leave these two boys to sort out uh, their issues. <laughs> 